Tonight on Queer Idea, we are talking to some people that we met when we went to a bar because that's what, well, I do. So at a bar, you'll often find DJs and drag queens. So that's tonight's uh, show is DJs and drag queens. So to help me out, I've got uh, my special guests. I've got um, Jake Sinney, who's a DJ that uh, worked in uh, Brisbane, has recently returned to Melbourne. And I've got uh, Regina, Regina, Regina. Um, well, for a $2 coin, you can call me anything, really. Okay. We'll Sorry. go with Regina <laughs> Regina as well. Regina rims very well. <laughs> and we're going to talk a little bit about drag in, in bars nowadays. Um, where do you perform? Where would I be able to see you? Well, I don't have a permanent spot because basically Melbourne's full of snobby bitches. <laughs> but listen, I'll perform anywhere. I'm, not, I'm accustomed to performing naked to homeless men, really. But I've been to Prince of Wales. I've performed at Club London. Um, I've had a spot at Karma Bar, but it got cancelled. Okay. I'm not happy about that, so I'll be writing them a very angry email trying to get some money out of them, but it's not going to work. So for <laughs> young people who are, or not young in years, but young in, in experience who are trying to break into drag, how, how do you get gigs? Um, my biggest piece of advice is don't, because there's already enough piranhas in the tank. But just broadcast yourself out there any way you can, even if you're tramping around your mum's knickers go and do it. It's you. If you want to do it, you're having fun. Nobody else can stop you. Cool. Jake, you have uh, been DJing in queer bars for a long, long time. Yep. Have you seen, do you think there's a change in the, in the way that, that drag's portrayed in, in our bars and clubs? Um, yeah, a little bit. Um, I think uh, in the past, drags were respected um, and they used to get longer gigs. Now they're sort of changing very, very quickly. Um, which is, I guess, is similar to what's happened to the DJs. When you say longer gigs, you mean like actual time, or do you mean like... Yeah, like, that, like a, a DJ would have a residency at a club for like five or six years, and I think um, drag queens as well used to have longer residencies at the club, um, and then would have special guests coming on with them. And now it's like, if you don't have a new frock, I want a new one. All right, yeah. Okay, we'll f flop you out. All right, so what is, um, what's good drag? Me. Yeah. <laughs> can, can you extemporate on that um, answer and maybe give me um, some perspective on other people as well? Um, I think drag should always be glamour and fun, not just throwing on a bikini and dancing around to a Beyonce song. That's not drag. That's just pathetic. Okay, so but when you say glamour and fun, what, what, what do you mean? Because you can do what you just said, Beyonce song, in a, you know, a, a glossy bikini. But nobody wants to hear a top 40 song performed on stage. You've heard it 50 times on the dance floor and you've seen 50 queens on the floor dancing to it. Why put one up on the stage in a dress? It's okay. Interesting. Your idea, Jake? Yeah, it needs to be uh, glitter, glam and over the top. Drag, that's what drag is. Drag is, is a guy in a dress um, over the top, like big, just like Regina. <laughs> and, and fun. Look, it has to have an element of fun. So, so what about, because in, in bars and clubs you're seeing a lot of people who are, or a lot of drags that are, uh, you know, very, they pass. They pass as, as, a, as a woman. Yeah. Uh, they've had implants, etc. Is that not good drag? No, that's fantastic too. That's your female impersonators and I really like that where if they're, you know, they look exactly like a Britney or a Beyonce and they've got the moves and everything, that's fantastic too. There's a place for that as well. But I also think we're forgetting about the the reason we used to go to gay club to see a drag queen was to have a good old laugh. Not at the drag queen, with the drag queen. And when they're hosting and telling jokes in between as well, that's part of it. Right, okay. Um, and some of the women out there might uh, not sure whether drag is a cool thing or not because it's sort of taking up female stereotypes. We we'll could put political correctness aside for the time being. Yep. Please bear with us. Um, uh, all right, so now you obviously have a boy persona as well. Yep. How would you describe, like, what's your boy name? Mark. Mark. And how would you describe Mark? Um, serious, very quiet, and I'll always just do what I have to, and that's it. But Regina is more of a. I'll go and harass you. I'll make the dirty rape jokes. I don't apologise for being so disgusting. It's just me. And I think everyone's got that part of them, but they're too scared to let it out. And, well, I do. Well, but didn't you have um, something that did come out just recently with the vending machine? Oh, last <laughs> night at work I hit the vending machine with my shoe to get a sandwich. But that was, that was Mark that did that? Yes, that was Mark. And so do you, do you think that, that Regina lives inside of Mark as well? Very much. I think Regina is the core of Mark. Whenever there's a problem that Mark can't solve, Regina just goes at it like a bull in a china shop and gets it done. 
<laughs> why. You're so simple. Um, it's amazing. All right, beautiful. Uh, so we're seeing, um, I've heard a lot of people say that with Grindr and Wolf and, and the internet and people hooking up, that there's less people going to bars and or gay bars and clubs. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Well, Do you think so? Yes and no. I think people are becoming so attached to sex and which is great don't get me wrong but they're not going out and venturing out because it's okay I've seen this this is too pretentious like you used to walk into a club and it was fun but now it's just a bunch of teenagers pretending to be 20 year olds drunk or off their face making snide remarks pretending to be shady because they've watched an episode of RuPaul (laughs) (laughs) I just think that if there's a a lack of fun entertainment well then people are going to stay home it's just like uh, if there's not enough good big blockbuster movies, you're not going to go to cinema. Um, Fantastic clubs out there, but maybe we need to look at a different element in Melbourne to start bringing the people that are sitting at home on Grindr out. Okay, to make it more fun. Yeah. Um, Quick question. If if bars and clubs did go down, if, in other words, people did stop going, is that the death of drag? No. No? I think as long as there's people to look at me, there'll always be drag. (laughs) Yeah, but I guess what I'm saying is that Drag, it's very infrequent that you'll go and see a drag show that isn't connected to a drinking event. So Mm -hmm. it does tend to be something that's within an existing sort of forum. And I'm just wondering, have you seen many drag shows? I mean, you said you went to something called Divas? In Las Vegas, yes, which has been running for like 20 years. Absolutely huge, fantastic show. Um, And But, yeah, that's Vegas. You've got theatre, so you don't have to see it in a club. But, yeah, I guess in Melbourne... Apart from who we used to have uh, lay girls down at St Kilda, which yep. is a long, long time ago, which yep. is a fantastic show to see, you can really only see them in bars and clubs here. Okay, beautiful. Well, that's pretty much the time that we have for uh, this show right now. So um, if you do want to save your drag queens and you don't feel like you want to change yourself to Regina and uh, sing <laughs> songs about peace, then uh, get off the couch, go out, maybe this Friday. Thanks for watching Queer Idea.